So I floated the question last video about, well, what, what if we didn't want to fully reduce an ester? What if we just wanted to partially reduce an ester? And it turns out that we have a really good reagent for that. It's called Dibal H. Um, so if a full ester reduction made the alcohol a partial ester reduction would end with the aldehyde. So this hydride came from Dibal H. So what is Dibal H? <clears throat> kind of a funny acronym, kind of. Um, anyway, it's a diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So Dibal H, diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So what does that look like? You have our aluminum. We have two isobutyl groups and a hydrogen on it. So the way I draw, draw it, it kind of looks like. I don't know. That was weird. Um, anyway, Dibal H. Um, so Dibal H is a reagent that will do this partial reduction. As long as a few things are observed, we still need our aprotic solvent because this is still a really strong reducing agent. It can just act as a base. Um, so we have to have an aprotic solvent like diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran. So we'll draw our diethyl ether in there. Um, also, this has to be run at a low temperature. So low temperature. Um, so how does this reaction work? Um, <clears throat> well, um, things are a little bit different with Dibal H, right? Uh, in lithium aluminum hydride, the aluminum is negatively charged formally because it has four hydrogens on it. But in this case, aluminum is neutral. Um, it's just got three things off of it, uh, which means that it's lacking an octet, right? Um, and that means that it is, it's, it's wanting electrons. This is now electrophilic. So we have to ask ourselves, well, how would this act as a nucleophile then? Um, so if this is acting at the nu as the nucleophile, we have to say, well, what is the most partially negative component of that molecule? Um, and if you look back at our resonance structures, that might help. So think about that for a second. Pause it, decide, all right, you're back. The most partially negative component of this is gonna be this oxygen up here. Um, and essentially the first step in this reaction, the partial negative on that oxygen is attracted to the partial positive of that aluminum. And it forms this oxygen aluminum bond where now this aluminum is negatively charged and that makes this hydrogen that's attached very reactive. Um, so essentially what's going to happen next is we're going to get, and I forgot the positive charge there, there we go, we got our formal charge figured out. Um, that makes this hydrogen really nucleophilic and it's already brought into extremely close proximity with the carbonyl carbon. Um, so essentially, it's going to grab the electrons in the aluminum hydrogen bond and add it to that carbonyl carbon in an intramolecular fashion. So all happening on that same molecule. Um, at that point, we have the hydride that just added there. We have our O aluminum bond. The aluminum has those two big isobutyl groups on there. And essentially, um, this complex, this whole thing, is stable at low temperature. So as long as we maintain the temperature of this reaction at a certain level, it's just going to stay as this intermediate structure. I mean, that's essentially what we do to run this reaction. We, we keep it at low temperature, and then we add our second step before, um, before we even warm it up. So essentially we add water and acid to this, and the water, oxygens have a strong affinity for aluminum. The water is going to be attracted to that aluminum once, it, and when it comes into contact with it, this O aluminum bond is going to weaken, allowing it to come down and form a pi bond. And then the best leaving group is going to leave. What's the best leaving group? It's that OR. So that OR is then going to leave. If you follow those arrows, that produces the product, um, and then essentially the water being added to the aluminum species. So um, 
So this is how we do that partial uh, ester to aldehyde reduction with Thibal H. Um, it's a pretty slick method. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is that. Um, that's the final reduction of these um, more uh, of these less electrophilic uh, carbonyl derivatives. Um, so we'll give a broad overview of them right now. This brings us to the next page of your notes where we are essentially just walking through all of the reduction methods that we've learned about with the different types of carbonyls. Um, so this page is great, it organizes everything, but really it's just a recap of everything that we've talked about without all the details. Um, so what I'd like you to do before you watch anything else is just walk through it for yourself. We have it organized by more reactive carbonyls with sodium borohydride versus less reactive carbonyls with sodium borohydride, et cetera, et cetera. Walk through all of them, and you're gonna get the most out of this next page if you do it yourself without getting any information from me. Um, so kind of putting it into your own headspace. Uh, but I'll get back to it in one second. All right, for our first overview, we have the board kind of organized a little bit differently than it looks on your page, but essentially the less reactive carbonyl, sorry, the more reactive carbonyl derivatives here. <clears throat> this is an aldehyde, this is a ketone. Uh, make sure you can take those structures and convert them to their skeletal structures. We need to be able to draw molecules as skeletal structures or as these condensed formulas as they're written here. Um, and then here we have the less reactive carbonyl derivatives, carboxylic acid, esters, and amides. And in both cases, we're trying to react them with sodium borohydride, our less, our less reactive reductant. Um, so sodium borohydride reacts really well with the more reactive carbonyl derivatives. The aldehydes would turn to primary alcohols the ketones would turn into secondary alcohols. Um, so that went to that, that went to that. And what about here? What happened here? Uh, remember with these less reactive carbonyl derivatives, sodium borohydride is just too weak of a reductant. So all of these proceed to give no reaction. We run this in a lab, starting material just stares back at you and says, on board. All right, next one coming up. All right, so now we have the same organization but with a new reagent, lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is our more reactive reductant. Uh, because of that, we have to use our aprotic solvents. Um, so we'll put our diethyl ether on here. Um, and it's going to form the same thing that sodium borohydride would have with the aldehyde, and the ketone will form our secondary alcohol or our primary alcohol. Um, why do we need to know about both of them? Well, what about chemoselectivity? We talked a lot about chemoselectivity um, with some of these reductions. And we could have a molecule where we have both one of these and one of these. Um, and if we only wanted to reduce these, uh, we would use sodium borohydride. But if we wanted a global reduction, we could use lithium aluminum hydride. Um, so that being said, uh, the strong reductant with the strong electrophile um, reduces those, and the strong reductant with the less reactive electrophiles still works. Uh, the carboxylic acid forms the primary alcohol, the ester forms the primary alcohol, and the amide, or the, yeah, the amide with lithium aluminum hydride forms the primary amine. NH2 instead of that OH. So um, hopefully you uh, just did all of that before me even talking with you about it. Our special case, as I have it designated here, we have our less reactive carbonyl derivative, the ester with Thibal H. Um, how do we have to run this? We run this in an aprotic solvent at low temp, and then we have to quench with water. So we'll put a one, two, water quench step. Um, and essentially this is that special case where this is going to partially reduce the ester to the aldehyde. Um, so that being said, what happens if we increase the temperature? Um, really all that happens is we get a full reduction. That about H, that complex that we talked about um, earlier will fall apart at higher temperature and then another equivalent of Dibel H will reduce 
the um, aldehyde further. And, and in reality, sometimes people in a laboratory use dibal H to fully reduce things just because they have it on hand. And also it's a little bit easier to work with depending on a few factors than lithium aluminum hydride. Um, but it's a lot more expensive than lithium aluminum hydride as well. So you have to balance the expense with the use. And, and the real power of dibal H is in a selective reduction um, although it will also do a full reduction if used a little bit differently. So, um, yeah, so we have now finished reductions of all of our different carbonyl derivatives. So, exciting times. <laughs>